What's up YouTube, Rudy here, and welcome to Let's Play Children of a Dead Earth. And this game is a space combat simulator focusing on realism, real world physics, and everything. The game is based upon modern day technologies that we could conceivably build and implement. The purpose of this game is really to ask what will happen in space combat. What tactics will we, the player, come up with? And what sort of ships will we design ourselves? Right now, we're going to be looking at the campaign. I've already played the first tutorial mission, and now I'm going to play False Flag. The purpose of this mission is to intercept and destroy an enemy spacecraft around Ganymede using overwhelming firepower. Definitely seems like we're in a future world where humanity has spread across the solar system. We can see activity on the surface here, but yeah, basically the premise behind this game is that the Earth has been destroyed. It's environmentally collapsed. In fact, there was a great event called the Collapse, and now there are various factions in the solar system. And now tension is increasing, and it seems like a massive all-out war is on the horizon. Thus congratulating me on getting through the first mission, but now we have a combat mission. A small combat vessel belonging to the United Soul Trade Alliance. These are the bad guys. They're the baddies. The USTA. I feel like uh, it's a common thing these days to have the bad guys called an alliance of some kind. They went rogue around Ganymede and attacked one of our cargo freighters. They have disavowed any support for such an act, but the rest of us at the Republic Command disbelieve such a claim. In all likelihood, this is yet another provocation ordered directly from the USTA headquarters itself. Alright, so things are heating up and now we are going to destroy this so-called rogue ship. What's cool is they give you a uh, recommended reading and they try to teach you about orbital mechanics. Now you can just ignore all this or you can read all this, which is pretty neat. And uh, knowing orbital mechanics is definitely something you'll want to be able to more efficiently intercept the enemy craft. Uh, I almost feel like this is a puzzle game, almost. You know, you need to figure out your maneuvers, you need to figure out how you're going to intercept the enemy, and then when you finally pass them at who knows how many kilometers per second, you're gonna have a few seconds of intense firepower, and hopefully they'll be dead and you'll still be alive. Uh, we are the Republic of the Free People, by the way. The Republic itself was formed primarily by the states of Indonesia, India, Philippines, and Pakistan. I really, I like the, uh, the backstory in this game. Oh, uh, actually, no, the Earth, they called it the Cataclysm, not the Collapse. But yeah, there was a Cataclysm, and now Earth is effectively uninhabitable. So, our fleet is going to consist of one patrol craft. You'll, you'll notice that most, all the ships in the game are based on, uh, on this, like, cylindric design. And the idea there is that the for like it, the slope design will help to deflect incoming shots. Additionally, the cylinder is very efficient. It's got a good uh, internal volume to surface area ratio. My ship has 3.86 kilometers of delta V. That's basically my fuel, how much I'll be able to maneuver. Uh, once I use that up, then I won't be able to maneuver. Like if I'm on a collision course with something, I can't stop myself or try to avoid it or anything like that. I have three 60mm cannons and three 11mm railguns. Now, I'm really into the railguns. And if the enemy has a laser skiff, what are they armed with? They have one small decoy launcher, eight 60mm cannons, and four green 13 megawatt lasers. Okay, well, I think we're ready to begin the mission. Mission. All right, I... Okay, so here we have my craft. RFP patrol ship. The Republic of Free People patrol ship. There is Ganymede. And if we take a look around... Ooh, there's Jupiter off in the distance. A great majestic planet. These solitary spheres orbiting for many billions of years undisturbed. But now we are here to make war and destruction. And they will be the witness to our celestial ballet. All right, so the ship, the enemy ship is in a highly elliptical orbit. We're on the exact same plane. So 
this is effectively a 2D engagement, even though space is three-dimensional. Uh, up here, I can click on my ship, and I can inspect the ship more closely. Oh, this is called the RSF Earth Set, okay. I'm not sure about the crew numbers of this ship, I think. We have some methane tanks. Okay, so there's a there's a crew module. There's 20 crew people, crew members on the ship. So this sort of gives you an idea of how the scale of these ships are. And that's interesting. The ship is right... The crew module is right next to the fission reactor. So there must be some pretty intense radiation shielding going on here. If the crew module is further up in the ship, then of course uh, you would need less radiation shielding. But... Okay, that's pretty good. And I mean, you'll notice that like this is just one pressurized crew can and everything else is just empty space. It's one of the advantages of space, I guess. <laughs> okay, enough of that nonsense. Ah, Jupiter. I mean, you wanted to see the galaxy and here you are, but you have no windows. All right, so the game wants to guide me through this a bit. I've already played this mission, so I think I'm somewhat familiar with combat. Let's see. So I can select my ship here, uh, and then I can adjust my trajectory. I can... So it says here, a note on this mission, the enemy's orbit is elliptical rather than circular. As a result, if you do try to orbit phase like last mission, it will only work properly at the periapsis of their orbit. And one more concern, Jupiter will perturb your orbits heavily meaning you won't have perfect ellipses for orbits. This may further confound your orbit phasing. Oh, ho, oh. quite confounding indeed. All right, so what do we want to try here? I can uh, select this uh, planet looking icon over here to have it automatically match my orbit. Okay, so this burn looks like it'll match me with the orbit of the laser skiff. I think I'll give that a try. Things seem to be lining up. All right, so now we are in an orbit that matches the enemy laser skiff, and we've used up... Uh, so we had 3.86 kilometers per second, now we have 2.72. So now we can do something... Now we can do... we can, uh... Hmm, what's this happening here? So here are... I, it looks like here I can do a flyby of the enemy, and that'll adjust tr my trajectory and put me onto a collision course. So I think what I'll do is I'll... Uh, select this here, which will allow me to do a flyby of the enemy laser skiff. And the flyby will happen at 1.26 kilometers per second squared. And then after the flyby is complete, I can readjust my orbit back so I don't crash into Ganymede. So let's advance time. Alright, now we are in combat. So here, this uh, green diamond represents my own ship. And this is the enemy ship. Uh, these bands represent the range of my weapons, so this is the range of my turreted cannons, the range of my railguns. Uh, as you can see, the ship is not in range of my railguns yet, but they will be soon. They are approaching us, relatively speaking, at 1.26 kilometers per second, and they're sort of moving in this direction to my left. So I'm going to pass them, and that's the enemy ship, so I'm going to sort of head off in that direction. Uh, and the flyby will happen in 41 seconds. So, I mean, at first, my railguns will be in range. Uh, if I click on the enemy ship, we can see their weapons. You can see that they have uh, green lasers, which only have a range of 20 kilometers, so I'll have some time to shoot my railguns at the enemy, and they can't even retaliate. Uh, so now that I'm looking at the enemy ship, I can select... I can target their lasers, which I think I will do for this flyby. Now it's explaining that I can give orders with my button. I can do uh, full homing, which tells your ship to chase the enemy at top speed. And then I select the enemy ship. You want me to select enemy weapons? I've already done that. I'm targeting the lasers. And now combat will unpause. So we are approaching the enemy, 
Incoming transmission. Uh, now that the railguns are in range, the game is going to pause me. It's going to pause and tell me... It's going to just explain. And now I need to orient my ship so my broadside is facing the enemy, and that way my weapons will be able to fire as all the weapons are mount mounted on the side of my ship, and they will fire automatically. So now my weapons are firing. You can see I'm leading the target, and those are all the tracers of the railgun bullets. Incoming transmission. I'm now hitting the enemy. Uh, the enemy is still more than 20 kilometers away, so I'm still safe from their lasers. Let's select the enemy ship to take a look at what's going on. Okay, so there I am. You can see all my railgun rounds coming at the enemy ship, targeting, try, attempting to take out the enemy lasers. And here, and I'm still well out of range, but that's going to change. And there's Jupiter observing silently. The enemies, the enemy lasers are about to be in range. Oh, perfect, excellent. We got away scot-free. The enemy lasers were never even in range. Alright, we took out an enemy module. Looks like we we destroyed both of their green lasers. Nice. And their cannons have been disabled. We've taken out their nuclear rocket. Wow, this ship has taken a lot of damage. Incoming Mission successful. Excellent. We did perfect. That ship has been disabled. So I have a, sil a silver rating. 100% uh, capital ships unscathed. I mean, my main problem was the fact that you can beat the mission in 2 hours and 38 minutes, but I took an entire day to do it. So apparently you can do it in 2 hours without even having your ship unscathed. Well, excellent. And that was Let's Play Children of a Dead Earth. Thank you for watching. Hit that thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you next time.